Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight video game review. Kyle Katarn is a bit of an obvious Han Solo stand-in, and after the events of the first game, which I don't know that much about because I haven't played it, he loses his father, and in trying to find out what was going on, he stumbles upon a plot of Dark Jedi trying to basically take over, I guess, the galaxy. The only way he's going to be able to fight them is to become a Jedi himself. So he gets the lightsaber and starts learning the ways of the Force. The game is basically a first-person shooter with a lightsaber and force powers and a third-person perspective because not many games can pull off the whole fencing in first-person thing. The moves of the lightsaber are pretty limited with basically just you know a couple of swipes either to, to either side and one massive swipe that is more powerful but also leaves you very open. This was, you know, the early days of it. The game is from like 97. But the mechanics of the lightsaber actually do work. You do, you know, hurt people pretty badly when you hit them with a lightsaber. And two lightsabers can, in fact, touch and sort of, you know, block each other. The force powers are limited to about four per side, and you, early on in the game, you can choose some from both the light side and the dark side, and then you have to make a choice. More on that a little later. If you, and then there are four neutral powers, not to be forgotten, push not push, pull, seeing, speed, and jump. And if you do not get any of the neutral powers or any of the powers from the other side, you will get a fifth bonus power applying to the side that you chose. The powers, of course, make sense as what they are. The light side powers are protective and defensive, sort of, you know, it's, they allow you to hide from the enemy or heal. And the dark side force powers are, of course, destructive and damaging. They are for use in combat. Force lightning, force grip, Force Destruction, which basically launches a small fireball, because suddenly we're in Charmed. Yeah. The weapons are very Star Wars, with, you know, some of them are pretty much your basic loadout for a first-person shooter, but, you know, they all fit in the Star Wars universe you know, with blaster weapons, and, you know, you can pick up Chewbacca's bowcaster rifle, if that's how you pronounce that. The basic plot of the game is pretty good. It is basically the, you know, I have to avenge a family member kind of thing, and then, you know, if I don't succeed, the bad guys will, you know, take over, kind of thing. But it is genuinely pretty interesting, and the... near the end of the game, you actually get to choose if you're going to be on the light side or the dark side. Now, this kind of choice, there are basically two ways of doing this. There is the way in which you basically just say, okay, yes or no, which do you want to be, you know. And then there is the one where your actions actually
actually have consequences. And they chose the latter, which means that throughout the game, if you defend people, if you defend the innocent in the areas that you fight in, you know, if you basically put your life before theirs, because you can take it, you're, you're a Jedi, you've got weapons, they're, you know, civilians. And, you know, you're the one who can pick up health packs, so they are. Then you will go to the light side. If, however, you do not protect them and maybe outright kill them, you will go to the dark side. And the last portion of the game will be affected by this choice. You, you can always tell how far you are to one side or the other by the meter in the force power selection menu. And the, the ending really does make good sense as far as, you know, for both sides. The cutscenes are all, you know, full motion video, all um, live action footage. You know, real actors, real props. Yes, it's all green screened. I'm guessing the budget did not allow for sets. And this does mean that the, you know, because of the technology constraints of the time, no, the camera never moves. And, you know, yeah, it's basically always people in front of a green screen. But, once you get over that, it's actually, they're really, really good. The actors really make an effort, and you know, you find yourself really hating the bad guys and really getting into the good guys. You know, you really want to see these guys win. You know, Kyle Katarn, both the in-game voice and the actor in these, you know, live-action segments, is just really charming. You know, he has that Han Solo charm where you know, he might not be the most law-abiding citizen in the Star Wars galaxy, but he seems like a really cool guy. You know, he's suave. The game has some very large and open areas. The levels can be downright massive. And though you don't go everywhere, this does still really give you a sense of an epic scope, you know, when you can, when you're walking across beams trying desperately not to fall down or maybe even look down, if you do happen to look down and you can literally see that you, your drop will be, you know, I don't know, a hundred feet maybe, and you can see that far, that really has an impact more than, you know, when you look down and, you know, after, I don't know, 10 feet it disappears into the horizon. You really do feel like, you know, you're doing something and making progress because you are in this massive environment. You fight the stormtroopers, of course, and then there are also various other you know, characters and creatures from Star Wars, you know, lore, including several from the films. For example, you meet some of those pig guards from Episode 6. The... The multiplayer part is also quite good with several traps in the levels. And, you know, basically the multiplayer is you up against your friends, all of whom have you know, lightsabers and force powers, so, you know, that is just automatically fun. And in multiplayer, you can also choose if you want, you know, some powers from both sides or, you know, all powers from one side, maybe even, you know, all 
you know, no neutral abilities. All powers from one side, and including the fifth bonus one. The graphics are, of course, dated by today's standards, but, you know, if you look at the game for what it was back then, it's really pretty good. For 97, the graphics are good. The level design is quite good. You, you know, infiltrate some large you know, facilities, or, you know, the factories and the like. The boss fights are pretty cool and even though you don't know a lot about the bosses before you know the game gets to them you you get like a brief summary of what they're like when right before the fight begins they still they're still really cool and they feel you know memorable i i have played the game several times but still i would say i could name I mean, not name, but I can remember every single boss enemy in this, including the badass Maul, who literally stays alive from his hatred even though his lower half has been cut off. He moves by floating. Yes, you fight a floating torso and head, with its head still on, I should say, driven purely by his hatred. And I suppose that's about what there is to say about the game. Hope you enjoyed it.